Okay, this is a bonus feature that we're actually trying uh, to do <laughs> to do for the first time. So that our listeners are going to be or or watchers are going to be guinea pigs. So uh, this is uh, this is this is me driving at a 2023 November Mercedes Autocross event on the Washington Circuit uh, at Summit Point. So Shane's going to uh, critique my driving, and then uh, we're going to play the video at half the speed. So that uh, and he's going to do occasional pause to to provide some comments. Okay, all right, take it away, Shane. All right, so here we are uh, looking over Danny's videos. Uh, I normally run this at full speed first to get an idea of what the course is, and that's what we would do uh, in the beginning. Here we're just kind of streamlining it, and we're going to run it as far as the feedback at half speed. <clears throat> so as we start now here, we're trying to eye out where the course is going. So we can see that there's a corner coming up. And then as we're approaching, uh, tell me if you, if you guys see the mouse. Yep, we do. Uh, sweet. So right here, we know that right ahead, there's going to be a left sweeper going into the gate straight ahead or over here to the left that I would know as soon as I would have memorized the video. As we're coming in. We want to have steady hands, but we have to notice that, hey, there, there's a curb there. So it's going to kind of bounce the car off a little bit. Use that to your advantage. We're hitting the gate for this um, slight right, kind of fitting it in. We have to get the car slowed down enough to kind of make this left to right chicane. And we want to use the whole course by tracking all the way out. As we approach here, you can take the approach as far as being tight. He has enough torque and can take the, the corners really well with this camber. So he's going to cut as much distance as he can here and just gut out. For momentum cars, you can take a slight wider approach and try to keep that momentum and track out throughout this. <clears throat> because right here on the entry, uh, you have different approaches. You can be nice and tight or with the momentum car staying out just a little bit wide. So on the approach for this left hander, you can actually what I refer to as soften in the corner. So if you think of it as you're tighter to the left, you're going to make that left turn more abrupt. And that means you have to go slower. If you have a slightly wider approach, you can actually lessen your angle of attack. As this is, is, a, is a 120 turn. As we're setting up for this one, same approach. We can either dive in <clears throat> and scrub the speed. And in this case, we're worried about the exit. There's nothing to gain here on the exit since it is pinching you back in, kind of doing a pseudo 180 or teardrop. So what we'll end up doing is actually just cutting as much distance as possible. You're only adding distance if you can gain something on exit. As we can see here, there's nothing to gain on the exit of that right-hander, the gain is this left. So you're just gonna tighten up and get things going as best as you can. All right, I got a little bit of buffering. Right here, this is your go moment. <clears throat> you're trying to go as, as best as you can through here, tighten it in because it's uh, bumpy. So with the lot, you wanna kind of watch your throttle work here because it's just gonna throw your car around. And so you're just gonna dance through the transitions a little bit of trail braking since we have to make this left to right transition. Uh, try and keep it tight because as you can see here on the approach to the slalom, uh, you it is working against you. So you cannot track out to the left. You have to bring it back and be tight. So you're going to try and carry as much speed as you can and then bring it back around and still be able to backside uh, these first two cones, or at least the first cone. So Danny's doing a good job in here, kind of dancing through the skip pad. It is offset against him, so he has to dance it out a little bit. You can see that the transition <clears throat> of the pavement is going to be pretty bad. So once you see light versus darker tarmac, chances are your uh, traction is going to change. So what you want to do is stay neutral on your throttle. And any of your inputs, just stay steady. Just spin yourself through here as much as you can and then track it out. All right. And All right. That, Great. Thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. This is full run. So that way we have that take. Okay. And see so how now this is run. the full speed run. Mm -hmm. All right. Ready. All right. Ready. Thank you. 
Yeah, this is a uh, actually a pretty uh, busy course. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, it's it's a little bit uh, um, you know for for Mercedes Club uh, this this is probably one of the more busier ones. I like this one though actually. I, I didn't I think some elements were busy, but at the same time it's a lot. That it's it's very challenging. Like this section right here, it it, it, it you know it sort of forced you to kind of jam it in there. Yeah. And then you got to give it up a lot in order to get get this run. So yeah. So there, there's a lot of precise driving and ballsy at the same time. Yeah, like this element right here is kind of tricky because it forces yeah. you with a Scandinavian look. Yeah. And the, the finish, because the surface is more slickery, you know, that force you to stay way ahead of time too. So Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty challenging course. No, it, it, it definitely was. Uh, I, I, after, I didn't appreciate it the first run. I was like, oh man, it's one of those, like you just flooring it type things. And then actually looking at it again, I was like, okay, it's, it's actually trickier because one of the elements too on this is the surface. With the surface change and the bumps, uh, the, the if you're stiffly sprung, you're going to be fighting the car uh, quite a bit. And in some areas, it looks like you can actually use the gutter or the hump uh, to your advantage. Like even like I'm sure there's elements where you have the where you can use the curb. Yeah, like there was like two elements where you can almost use the curb. And mm -hmm. like getting close to the curb, it all it it dips in, so yeah. that's where the car I'm, can. I'm a lot less likely to uh, um, to to really do a jump or uh, you know you know with the GTS. Yeah, but uh, but but with my my ND, all bets are off. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I'm jumping anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like th this corner right here, you can like critique for quite a bit. Like, yeah, you can, you can do it's a, a tough corner. That yeah, is, because it's, it's, it's a real tough corner. It's hard to see too at the same time. Yeah, right. Because you're you're dealing with a surface that's really slippery. So it you know so the back end actually moves, and then then you gotta you gotta slow down and kind of stuff it in there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. You know to make that to make that one thirty degree turn. Yeah, um, and then and then you got a little tiny straight that you got to maximize your acceleration. Yep. Yep. And then then you got to do your transition. And then the interesting part is is the next turn back into the right. Nobody ever runs that section, so it's slick. It's slippery as heck when you go on the braking. Yes, yes. Yeah. So a lot of people just blown their brakes and right go over. So so that's something that you almost have to remember mentally that that okay here this is a part that we never run before, even though it's not part of the skip pad. It's a service road, but mm -hmm. it's just a slick, you know. Yes. So it's something that you have to make adjustments and uh, and and know to and anticipate ahead of time. Yeah, because you'll be like, oh, happy day, happy day. I got grip for days because it's just a right hander. Nope, that's part of the skid pad. It's not. <laughs> yeah. It's not. And, and the interesting part is, is you know, if you carry a lot of speed, you look at the, the very first cone on the exit, it, it pinches you right back into the right. Yes, it does. Yeah. So and, so if you've blown it, man, that's it, you know? <laughs> no, it, it, it yeah. is. It, it definitely is. Like, if I was to do a, a, a true vlog on this, and that's why I was just trying to see how quickly I kind of went through it. Uh, a, a more deep dive breakdown of it would probably be an, an additional five minutes because then I would kind of point out those angles that sh that you were talking about. Yeah. Uh, at that speed, you can really kind of pause at the approach on it, and I would know the course a little bit better before doing one of those segments. And I'll be like, okay, this is the approach. Boom, you coming in. I only watched it like a handful of times that we we would do more talking than video than vlog so right and so uh you know i guess for the benefit of listeners you can they can see that um you know i'm the one that's actually there so i i know all the little intricacies of it yeah and then uh, you know for shane to kind of dissect it without without actually being there driving the course and understand right. the conditions i mean that takes a much higher skill to, yeah to, to even do that type of thing so so yeah. so we definitely appreciate you know for reals so yeah, yeah. The insights and yeah, and I know your driving style. So one of the key things too, like this shot is really good because I can get a better peripheral from left, left and right, see what's going on, and then the shot down here, the bottom right, <clears throat> can give give me that perspective of how close you may be getting to those corners. Uh, but but th this this combination is really good as far as uh, 40s vlogs. Yeah, I know that uh, you know, like my my style. I don't know if I have a style that uh, that's that's worth copying, but but I know that um, I, I I tend to prepare my car for high speed transitions. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting part is is that I I can't do that on a GTS because <laughs> the, the suspension and the spring rate to make those changes to 
to make it really, really stable in high speed transitions will cost me a lot of money. So, mm-hmm. so, so, so I kept it stock. I kept it, uh, you know, with softer springs. That's why, you know, like Shane's, ob- Shane's observation about the car being sweeping, you know, very nicely it is because the nature of the car being soft. Yeah. Um, and I paid a lot, um, you know, in high speed transitions. Yes. So that forced me to really, really stay ahead of the high speed transitions. Yeah. So it's almost like driving a front wheel drive car. I got to make my move, you know, 10, 15 feet before. Yeah. Before it's because I have to compensate for the, for, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the sways and slack, mm-hmm. you know, be, be, before, before it transitions in. So in, in, in super, super tight, high speed um, slaloms, that's when I have a lot of disadvantage. I can't stay fully through. Mm-hmm. Um, but but in the sweepers, it, it definitely helps. I mean, I, I can I can just throttle steer in just about any situation, regardless of what surface is. Yeah, no, no and, and here I can like your throttle pickup at, at points. The turbo doesn't lag too much. Uh, it gives you that good low end torque. So like even coming out of some of these boxes here, uh, you can pivot the car. This this is probably the only notion where I was like, okay, here you could have pivoted the car a little bit more on throttle. But I was trying to look at how the surface is and how much of a steering you have in at that particular speed. And it's like, okay, you're trying to turn, the car has this particular setup and it's still kind of understeering. So you couldn't roll on the throttle if, because that will understeer you too much. Yeah. So you had to wait patiently because uh, initial, my initial was you could have got on the throttle earlier to pivot the car, but with the surface, the car is just pushing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, I know my, uh, I, I know what my uh, flaw is with, with my driving is, is when, when, when the action gets hot, mm-hmm. I drive tight, mm-hmm. right? Because for some reason that, that, that's, that's been a habit that I learned from quite some time mm-hmm. when action gets hot, I, you know, um, I started losing a little bit of a trust to, to, to drive in a wider, you know, late, later apex lines. Yeah. So, so I tend to drive tighter when things are bad. Yeah. Um, you know, but but if if I was if I felt like if I felt confident, and then I, if I if I'm on my you know a better game, I I would have probably approached that line, you know, just come out a little bit wider, you know, you know, lay apex a little bit more, and then straighten it out a little, you know, in a different spot, and then mm-hmm. I can probably roll on the throttle a lot more aggressive. But yeah, man, it's getting late. Yeah. I, you know, I don't want to hold you on much longer. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. It was fun, <laughs> definitely fun. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Shane. Okay, thanks, Anna. Okay, all right, take it easy.